Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. So in a special way, let us remember our own families, our parents, and our siblings. And imperfect that our families are, we still give thanks to God for the gift of family. And so we keep in our hearts in this holy sacrifice of the Mass, our parents and our siblings, and pray that always love and forgiveness will reign in our families. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit, in, in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight to all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed." There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that, very, at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the, the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In the middle of the night, a young boy wakes up in a hospital bed. He feels very frightened and very alone. He is suffering from an intense pain. Why? Because burns, severe burns, covers 40% of his body. Someone had doused him with alcohol and then set him on fire. He starts crying for his mother, and the nurse leaves her night duty post to comfort, comfort him. She holds him, hugs him, whispers to him that the pain will go away sooner than he thinks. But nothing that the nurse did seems to lessen the boy's pain. He still cries for his mother. And the nurse is very confused and angry. Why was she confused and angry? Because it was his mother who set him on fire. That deep attachment of a child to his mother makes separation from her the worst experience a child can undergo. 
This perhaps is the reason why the young boy's pain of being separated from his mother was greater than the cruel pain inflicted on him by his own mother. Persons separated from their families, especially children, have been found by many researchers to register higher frequency of emotional difficulty than persons who have not been separated from their family. Child-family relationships are particularly important, therefore. Studies have shown that children usually ex who experience usually experience a disaster as only a minor disturbance if a parent is with them in the experience. And interesting, interestingly, the psychoanalyst Anna Freud, the daughter of Sigmund Freud, she, who, she directed three nurseries which housed young children separated from their families during World War II. And in her book entitled War and Children, she writes, The war acquires comparatively little significance for children so long as it only threatens their lives, disturbs their material comfort, or cuts their food rations. It, however, becomes enormously significant the moment it breaks up family life and uproots the first emotional attachments of the child within the family. And Anna Freud continues and says, and this is very surprising, it is a known fact that children will cling even to mother who are continually ill-tempered and sometimes cruel to them. The children would rather be with their parents even if their parents are cruel to them. That is how important the relationship of a parent and a child is. The regular presence of parents is a constant assurance to children of safety, especially for very young children. The family, no matter what its shortcomings are, no matter how flawed it is, is still the fundamental human connection each person has. There are imperfections and faults in every human connection. But even the most flawed and fragile of families tend to be more supportive to a young child than an institutional upbringing that a school, parish, or orphanage can provide. No matter how much an institution cares for a child, it can never, never replace the natural bond between a parent and a child. This is very important, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, and today's reading invites us to reflect on this fundamental relationship, fundamental human connection that we have. And it provides us with three points for reflection. The first point, the relationship of a child to his fa family, most especially his relationship with his or her parents, is the fundamental human connection of every person. The book of Sirach says, God sets a father in honor over his children, a mother's authority he confirms over her children. These words from scripture simply confirms our human experience, that the relationship of a person with his or her parents is the most fundamental human connection he or she may ever have. Bearing this in mind, it must not be difficult, therefore, for children to honor and revere their parents, to grieve them not as long as they live, and to care for them in their old age. Our first reading ends with the following words, Kindness to a parent will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the death of your sins. 
In other words, in the mind of God, perhaps, a child's relationship with his or her parent is so important that the Lord will look kindly on anyone who is kind and loving to his or her parents, no matter how flawed they are. And this brings us to our second point. Parents have that special role in providing the family atmosphere in which the child may grow in love. In today's gospel, Luke writes, When they had fulfilled the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. It is true the mutual love of Mary and Joseph for, e for each other and their love for their child, perhaps, that the child Jesus was schooled in love and grew in the security of his relationship and love of his parents. To know the meaning of love, Jesus will only have to go back to his own experience of love with his earthly parents. Parents are the first teachers of love. Their attachment to their children shows them that they are worthy of love and it shows them that what it means to love and how to love. And it would be very difficult for a child to mature without the caring support of loving parents. Just imagine, how conflicted a person will be if he constantly yearns for comfort and love in his most fundamental relationship with his parents, but do not actually get it. Just imagine how confused a person will be if he makes he mistakes parental abuse for parental love. So my dear parents, your role is very important. And finally, let's go to our third point. Because relationships among imperfect individuals will be flawed, definitely flawed. Love and forgiveness is important. This is why Paul reminds us in his letter to the Colossians, and hopefully the parents among us will take this to heart. Paul says, brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another because all of us are imperfect. If one has a grievance against another, bear with one another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love that is the bond of perfection. This is a reminder, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, a reminder to us that there is no perfect family, only flawed ones. Hence, Paul advises that we fill in the gaps in our imperfect love for one another by constantly striving to love the way God has loved us and forgiving one another the way the Lord has forgiven us. Pope Francis himself says, there is no perfect family. We do not have perfect parents. We are not perfect. We do not marry a perfect person or have perfect children. We have complaints from each other. We disappoint each other. So there is no healthy marriage or healthy family without the exercise of forgiveness. Indeed, no family is perfect. We will always argue, we will always fight. We may even stop talking with each other at times. All these we, all these we do because each one of us, everyone is flawed. Everyone is imperfect. But in the end, we know that family is family because God resides in our family. 
our relationship with our parents and with our siblings is the, is the most fundamental human connection we can ever have. Let us not forget that. And if parents and if parents are able to establish an environment of love and forgiveness in which children may thrive, then as someone puts it, at the end of the day, a loving family should find everything, everything forgivable. In this feast of the Holy Family, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we ask for the grace to look to our own family in gratitude for what we have received as family, no matter how imperfect or flawed it is. We also pray that we may receive the grace to love the way Joseph and Mary has taught Jesus and the way the Christ child born on Christmas Day has taught us. Amen. And before I give the final blessing for all families, I would just like to offer these eight rules of dysfunctional families. If you are guilty of any of the eight rules, hopefully today you can make that resolve to become a better family by addressing issues like this. And what are these eight rules that rule dysfunctional families? Very short. Number one, one must be in control of feelings and behaviors of others and must be in control of relationships. Number two, be right about everything because you are perfect, which is what I was saying. No one is perfect. That's why we have imperfect families. Number three, Blame yourself or someone else for every problem in the family. Pwede naman, wala na tayong blame. We just acknowledge the problem and move on and solve the problem without blaming. Because blaming, we end up blaming and then we forget about the problem, no? Nagkakasamaan ng loob tayo. Number four, denial of our freedoms. And what are freedom? these freedoms? We deny our feelings. We deny our thoughts. We deny our perceptions, our wants, and our imaginings. It is okay. Even if this is personal, you are not being selfish. You acknowledge all this at pag-usapan nyo. Yun yung importante. Pag-usapan ang inyong mga feelings. Huwag nyong dadamdamin tapos itatago nyo lang sa loob. Tapos sabihin, talagang hindi ako mahal. You have all these thoughts. No? That's why you need to correct them through conversation. Number five, do not talk honestly. That's the, the, that's the deadliest in many families that we are not honest with each other. And number six, this one is also very true in many families. Myth making, myth. Always, we always want to look at the bright side and because we want to look at the bright side, we always tell ourselves there is no problem in our family. That is the biggest lie that you can have in the family, that there is no problem in the family because no family is imperfect. Number seven, incompletion. Stay upset and confused without resolving differences. Dinadamdam na lang lahat, tapos tatahimik na lang. Tapos patong ng patong ng patong ng patong until you cannot resolve your differences anymore. And finally, the eighth rule is unreliability. That many of us perhaps think that little, I don't want to trust anyone because I do not want to be disappointed. You will always be disappointed, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, because everybody is imperfect. Kaya nga, no, kailangan natin ng pagmamahal at pagpapatawad sa isa't isa. So I hope that you will spend time and think what is the rule that reigns in our family, and hope, hopefully you can decide to get over that rule and offer this to the Lord today, the Feast of the Holy Family.